My name is Chris Johnson. I'm the Vice President of Rolling Thunder Chapter 4 Michigan, and I'm also the Chairman of D-Day Plus 73. Uh, my name's uh, Bill Sheets, and this is my wife, Jan. And uh, I've been a reenactor for about 36 years. Uh, Bill Sheets came along, and we hooked up with him, and one thing led to another after that, and I became a uh, 82nd Airborne 505th Paratrooper with his unit. In World War II. And the reason why I really like World War II is that my father was a veteran of World War II. He was in the Navy in the Pacific. He was a PT boat man from 1941 to 1946. He served all through the Pacific and was occupation force in Japan. And so I'm kind of doing this to honor him too. And we've extended from there. We've gotten, uh, we now have the German unit Das Reich. And we also have uh, 5th SS Viking. And uh, we also have the 45th uh, Armored Division. We also have the 1st Marines that help us out. 2nd yeah. Marines. Easy company. The Big Red One. Is that Army? That's, That's Army. Army. That's Army. The Big That's Red first, One. That's 1st Division. 1st Division. The Big Red One. We will have them here today, hopefully. Eventually, I'd like to be a, an HRS event. Well, basically, this event is all about the veterans, of course, World War II veterans. And we're trying to help the LST, you know, tell the story of the LST 393, about her being at Normandy, the history of, you know, of the ship. We're here down at Muskegon, Michigan, down at the LST 393. We're doing an event uh, to honor everything that's been going on in the past. And, uh, you know, we've got Rolling Thunder to help us along, you know, we're here to help them. Rolling Thunder is a veterans organization dedicated to the education of POW and MIA uh, to the public. Um, our secondary goal is to all veterans, to honor and make sure that nobody's left behind, nobody's forgotten. And, uh, you know, it's all about education, you know, it's all about uh, in information about, you know, what they don't teach in high school, what they don't teach in college. That's basically what it is. And the main thing, honoring the veterans, all veterans of all wars. That, that's our main goal here. Well, we'll me and a few of other Rolling Thunder members decided we wanted to do something for the community. Well, let's host it down at the LST 393. Okay. Well, what if we were to turn it into a little something bigger and we get a couple sponsors and we get a couple reenactors to help do the ship and one thing led to another and here we are three years later we're hosting ground battles, air raids and all kinds of different stuff all over the grounds. This provides history. It brings it to life so that the kids aren't just reading it in a book and trying to memorize it for a test. They actually are being able to touch it, feel it, and put things on. And it brings it to life so that they'll remember and they'll understand what our veterans have done to keep our freedom. The, the skirmish we have out there, we have two Purple Heart recipients that are going to receive a Purple Heart plaque from we the people giving back and uh, uh, one is a Vietnam veteran and one is a World War II veteran. The actual LST and Rolling Thunder is a motorcycle group that every year they do something for the community and for the community three years ago they decided they wanted to bring recognition to the LST. The, the 393 is officially 75 years old this year uh, she made 30 trips back and forth to Omaha Beach. And to have the public that lives here be able to see the LST and understand it's a valuable piece of our history. This is our third annual event and we hope to get bigger with each year that we progress. Battle and air raid, all kinds of good stuff going on. Free and open to the public, the only thing we ask is you, you, you pay for your food. Outside of that, everything else is free. And so they contacted us and asked us to get the reenactors and put together the uh, uh, air raid and battle scenarios and uh, some of the other activities on the ship. We have the, the hooli uh, hooligans are donating uh, two, two different spots of airtime for us. They're going to fly over and do a mock-up air raid and then our uh, closing ceremony for the Missy Man ceremony. We do have the 126 Army Band coming in uh, to play for us in the morning on Saturday. Uh, we have the Reese Puffers Jazz Band is going to be playing our swing dance. It's a 22-piece live jazz band. 
I'm Patrick McKee, and I'm with the Mark Dock and Sand Products Corporation. My grandfather purchased the LST-393 as war surplus in 1947 and used it as an auto ferry to carry new cars across Lake Michigan. Nash Rambler's coming back from Milwaukee and GM product going the other way. In 1947, my grandfather, Max McKee, purchased the LST-393 from war surplus. War Department, as he said, was having a special on it. He used the LST-393 after converting it to a car ferry, and he didn't have to change it much because it was already set up to carry vehicles. He carried new cars between Milwaukee and Muskegon. Nash Rambler's coming out of Milwaukee, and GM and Ford's going the other way. That business lasted until 1973. And, uh, after that, the ship was laid up for many years here at our dock, at the Mark Dock in Muskegon but spirit, the ship had a spirit. I really felt it. And I asked my dad one day, what are we doing with that thing? Why, why, why don't we put it back to use? Why don't we sell it, scrap it, anything? Let's do something with it. My dad looked up at me and he said, I like to keep it around as a conversation piece. After, uh, after several years languishing, and then when I was a little kid, I used to run around on the deck and chase the seagulls off it. And I always felt something about this ship. I felt the spirit, not ghosts, but a, a spirit. The ship is really, to me, alive. Eventually, Dad passed away, and my brother and I thought, this thing's pretty cool. Let's turn it back the way it was in World War II. Our first thought, though, we wanted to get it rolling again and get all our buddies on it and cruise the Great Lakes and beach it at Mackinac Island and charge out and have some fun with it. But that proved to be a little bit impractical. <laughs> but, uh, you know, about a year ago, I got to thinking, it's coming up on its 75th anniversary of the launching of the LST-393, and I thought, wouldn't it be neat to find the granddaughter or daughter of the lady who christened it and have her come back after all those years, rechristen it? Surely, uh, Miss Lucy Jean Sorensen, who christened it in 1942, is long gone, I thought. But maybe I can find her daughter, invite her to come and participate in this event. So I started making calls all around them. The USA. I was about to give up, and I thought, well, here's one more number I'm going to try. Virginia, you know, the ship was built at Newport News, might be a good number. So I went through my whole spiel. Hi, it's Patrick McKee. I had it down by road now. It's Patrick McKee with LST 393. I'm looking for anyone who might be related to Lucy Dean Sorensen who christened the ship in 1942. And the sweet little accent in Tidewater, Virginia voice on the other end of the line said, I'm Lucy Dean Sorensen. I said, wait a minute. You're Lucy Jean Sorensen's daughter, right? She said, no, I'm Lucy Jean Sorensen. I christened it in 1942. I was 11 years old, and my daddy was the general manager of the shipyard. And I thought, jackpot, this is unbelievable. <laughs> she, we had a great, had, we talked often on the phone. In fact, I talked to her about a week ago. And she sends her best wishes for the event that took place here today. And uh, eventually she sent me uh, some photographs of her christening the ship, and I thought, what a treasure, and they are now displayed on the ship. He says, well now, for all those 75 years, Lucy's been saved in that bottle that she smacked across that bow. And she pulls it out once or twice a year and shows people, even to this day, it's one of her most prized possessions. Not surprised she wants to give it up, but she wants to send it to you. I said, well, don't send it to me. Send it to the, to the board of directors. Send it to Dan Weichel, the curator. And uh, Joseph said, oh no, Patrick. She said she only wants to send it to you. And I thought, what an honor that is. Of course, I delivered it to the ship when I received it two days later. Okay. Of course, with those ribbons on it. She was 11 years old at the time. And that's the LST-393 in 1942. It's after the 75th anniversary of D-Day and D-Day plus 75. We're going to drop the number from our logo. And we're, we're branching out, as you can tell already, we already have vehicles from Vietnam and present day. It's just going to be called D-Day Plus. We're going to honor World War II, World War I, Korea, Afghanistan, Vietnam, Iraq. We want to honor everybody. Nobody, nobody should be left behind. Nobody should ever should be forgotten. And yes, it started out with World War II, but we're progressively opening it up to everybody. <laughs>
Invasion barges towing low-flying barrage balloons moving to secure a beachhead beneath the whine of live ammunition.